What's going on guys? Double R here, back again today with another video. Today we got a little something different for you guys today. It's not actually our usual 3.7. We actually got one of my best friends 3.0T here. And today we're actually going to do his first upgrade with some AMS lower down pipes. Alright guys, so these are 3 inch AMS lower down pipes. These are not the full down pipes, this is just from the lower cat all the way to the white pipe. Now this is a 3 inch diameter exhaust with a 2.5 inch flange that will actually fit to the rest of your stock cat back or if you have a 2.5 inch white pipe. So it's not the full 3, well it is a full 3 inch pipe, it just has a 2.5 inch flange at the end. So these will still give you the same results as you would if you were to put the full three inch down pipes on your exhaust. If you still had a stock Y pipe and a stock exhaust, you could put these on, go ahead and get your tune. You'd be able to pull more boost out of your turbos with this. These are one of his first modifications into his car and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install it for him. And I'm gonna show you guys step by step on how to do it. So these are most likely all the tools that you're gonna need to be able to accomplish this build. So what we have here is we got basically all 14 mils. That's all you're gonna need for the exhaust. Most of them are 14 mils. You're gonna need them for the nuts. Uh, so we got a ratcheting wrench and also, we got a ratchet and also a ratcheting wrench. Basically both of these will be able to pull off the nut. Uh, we got the O2 sensor socket so that way we can pull this off. Um, it's not necessary, but it really makes the job a lot easier. Uh, we got an impact, just in case. Uh, this has like 750 foot pounds of torque, so that should tell you enough. And then we got our arrays of, or we got an array of different sockets. Or, God damn. <laughs> Down bad. <laughs> All right, and we also have our array of different extensions. This uh, this is like three different extensions with a swivel, and then I got like this two foot long extension along with a breaker bar. This is gonna be very necessary for when you go into the engine bay. It's gonna be deep in there, and it's gonna be a very tough bolt to crack. So uh, that's gonna be the last thing that we're gonna end up working on. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start working on the bottom portion of this lower down pipe. We're gonna start taking off the brackets, the O2 sensor connectors, and then we'll work our way up to the engine bay. Ooh, wait, take these off. <laughs> Alright, so first things first, you're going to want to get your Q50 on a lift. If you have jack stands, this might be a little more difficult because you want to make it the easiest way possible to get on top of the car and work in the engine bay and also under the car and work underneath because you're going to be doing the lower down pipes which are near the exhaust, which is on the lower half of the front end of the car. So I'd highly recommend if you can get a lift or a friend to borrow, the, for a friend to let you use his lift, I highly recommend using that rather than jack stands. It's just going to be a lot harder. You're going to want to get this car cold. Arguably, these lower down pipes are one of the hottest points in the whole entire car. So you're going to want to get your car in the lift, either set a fan under it, and not run it for at least two to three hours. That way you can have a nice heat to be able to work with and you're not burning up your hands or anything like that. You want to have a comfortable workspace because you are going to be getting deep into this car, close to the turbos, near the exhaust manifold where it's going to get really hot. All right, so number three, you're going to end up removing the cap braces first. So you're not going to want to take these all the way off, but you're going to want to leave them loose just a little bit. So that way, once you take the rest of your bolts off from your Y pipe and from your the top half of the cat, that way your catalytic converter isn't falling all the way down to the floor. So you're just going to want to loosen that. There's going to be one on the driver's side. There's going to be one on the passenger side. They're both 14 mils. Just get those a little loose, leave them on for the time being, and then we'll take them off later. All right, so after you move the O2 sensors, now we're gonna go on to the top bolts. Now on the passenger side, there's gonna be three bolts that you're gonna have to get to. I'd highly recommend spraying some sort of PB blaster on them. That way you make it a little bit easier for you to take off because these are really in there. And with how hot these get, they're gonna be fused. So you're gonna wanna get some sort of like breaker bar to be able to get these off because they're really tough. So like I said, there's gonna be three on the passenger side, there's gonna be two on the driver's side. We're just gonna focus on the bottom nuts for now, and then we'll work our way up to the engine bay. 
After we remove those nuts, we're gonna remove the nuts on the Y pipe. So where the catalytic converter comes down and meets the Y pipe, there's gonna be two bolts on each side, driver and passenger. We're gonna take those off and like I said, we're gonna leave those loose for the time being because we don't want the whole exhaust come crashing down on us while we're trying to install it. Last but not least, to be able to take these out, this is arguably the hardest part to get to within this whole entire installation is gonna be the demon bolt on the top inside the engine bay. So you guys are gonna see if we look really deep inside this engine bay, just about three feet or like elbow lengths deep is gonna be this bolt. Now we're gonna have to take this out with a breaker bar. Like I said, try and get some PB blaster in there. It's really hard to get to. You're gonna need an array of extensions to be able to get in there. You're probably gonna have to put extension upon extension. And then once you get all that, get your breaker bar and try and break all these bolts loose and then take them out. These bolts you're gonna be able to take out all the way because we don't want them there no more you have all those bolts out you're gonna actually be able to now loosen that bolt that's on your connector that connects your whole entire catalytic converter that brace and then you'll be able to pull your catalytic converter out of your white pipe and it should come completely out the car and now you're able to go ahead and take out your O2 sensors all right so real quick guys just to show you the difference between the three inch down pipe and the catalytic converter we'll just look at this cat real quick you guys will see this is about maybe a one and a half inch I wouldn't even call this a two inch exhaust diameter from the cat back and you can see right here this is actually your catalytic converter so in the middle you guys can see all that honeycomb material this is actually what restricts your exhaust flow uh, this is what helps you pass emissions tests uh, it's just all that junk in the way just kind of blocking your exhaust stream so unlike the three inch downpipe which this is just completely see-through there's nothing blocking anything this is the two and a half inch inlet that goes to a three inch this is what allows you to be able to actually mount it up to your stock exhaust and your stock catalytic converter and then you have this three inch outlet and uh, you can see the whole entire thing is just completely see-through they have a spot for your bracket your they have a spot for your cat uh, catalytic converter bracket that way you can hook it up without any vibration and they also have a spot for your O2 sensors. That way you are not gonna have any check engine lights the moment you install these, which is actually a lot of problems with test pipes and other uh, down pipes like that. They actually don't provide this. So AMS, thank you for providing this and it makes it a lot easier for the R30 owners to install this and not have any sort of issue. I have this pressed, like pushed down somewhere, yeah. All right, so we just got these screws in. Um, I don't have any inverse torques, and if you guys don't neither, that's totally okay. AMS provide you with a couple of bolts that you'll actually be able to use on these. Um, so you're actually gonna wanna just take one upside down. Take that down, and then you'll just take one, another one right side up. And then what you would do is you would tighten them both together, and then you'd be able to twist this all the way down once you meet this base surface, just keep twisting it down and eventually this thread will be able to come through and there's no need for this inverse torque. Now, once we have these on, this is the passenger side lower down pipe, I believe. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put our gasket. This is a gasket AMS gave us. Now, we would originally use the OEM gaskets, but the problem is, is I can't find the top passenger gasket for this lower down pipe. So we're gonna end up using one AMS gasket. Now the reason why I'm only using one is because I'd much rather OEM gaskets for the pure fact that one is solid metal and two, it's not a multi-layer crush gasket. So whereas this, you can see it's like some sort of cardboard metal material. It's really flimsy um, and I feel like this will blow very easily. So we're just gonna minimize everything to one and that way we minimize error. Uh, and then also what these are are your adapter plates from your three inch to your two and a half inch flange and this will give you no boost leak and this will allow you to run your exhaust efficiently so let's go ahead we're gonna throw this gasket on and then we're gonna throw this passenger side lower down pipe up and uh, that'll be his first ever modification on his queue
So everything's installed and hand tightened. We haven't torqued down everything yet. I believe that these uh, nuts are supposed to be torqued down to 33 foot pounds of torque. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go through the engine bay, we're gonna torque those down first and then kind of work our way down here through the exhaust and make sure that we get everything, plug all the O2 sensors in and uh, we're gonna start the car up here and make sure that there's no exhaust leaks or anything like that, so. I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. 3.0T downpipes on a VR30 twin turbo motor from Nissan. We did it in an Infiniti Q50. I'm pretty sure this matches up also with Infiniti Q60. Keep in mind that this Infiniti Q50 was rear wheel drive. So it did not have the front train axles of the all wheel drive Q50s. So just keep those in mind when you go ahead and buy these test pipes with these lower down pipes uh, because you want to make sure that it fits your car. So we're gonna run it, we're gonna make sure that there was no exhaust leaks, we're gonna make sure that the car runs fine, we should be able to hear the turbos a little bit more, we should feel a little more torque down low and up top, and uh, yeah, this car should run a little more efficiently, we shouldn't have any sort of engine light or any sort of warning whatsoever, and uh, the, really the only way to get your utmost efficiency out of these lower down pipes is by getting a tune. Now there's no tune on this car yet, but Eventually, we'll be able to tune this car. You guys will be able to follow the build and see what we're going to end up doing with it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, it was informative. If you guys want to see any other 3.0T content, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow, like, and share with this channel. And, uh, yeah, I'm Double R, guys, and I'm out.